Oh, we go. Hi. Today is Thursday, May 11, 2023. <laughs> My name is Len Baer, and this is another installment of the Science of Havana Syndrome. Today, I'll review an article by Professor James Lynn of the University of Illinois, Chicago, titled Directed Energy Weapons Research Becomes Official. It was published in Microwave Magazine in April 2022, and I'll dive into the content of the article, and of course, you'll get to hear my sardonic commentary. We know Professor Lynn as the author of the book Auditory Effects of Microwave Radiation, um, and uh, as the first academic to link Havana Syndrome to microwave energy in September of 2017. Five years later, this hypothesis is still most plausible mechanism behind these attacks. This article definitely sounds much more assertive and adds much needed granularity to this subject matter. Professor Lin emphasizes that the combination of pulse parameters and high pulse power is what makes damage to the brain tissue possible without producing burns, as one would expect from microwave energy. Then Professor, Professor Lin reminds, me, reminds us of the rich history of the U.S. experimenting with directed energy and lists various projects. One of them was Project Medusa, uh, which stands for Mob Access Deterrent, uh, Mob Access Deterrent Using Silent Audio. It most definitely resulted in producing the hardware that generated the desired effect. The project was shut down because of the substantial damage to the brain it produced. But that didn't stop the U.S. Air Forces and U.S. Army from continuing research on these weapons. As a result of this ongoing work, it was established that in order to generate brain tissue injury, one only needs to elevate brain temperature using high-power microwave pulses by one degree centigrade, which is acceptable according to the uh, current federal safety guidelines. And that makes me wonder, a typical FBI response to civilians diagnosed with Havana syndrome states that they see no evidence of federal law being broken. Is it because they know these weapons operate within uh, current uh, outdated safety standards? But the most revelatory part of Professor Lin's article is as follows. The required microwave technology is mature and, in general, commercially available in many developed countries or military powers. Longer distances and high-power scenarios would require more bulky equipment and sophisticated aiming devices, but packable equipment is possible for closer-range non-lethal applications. This would not preclude the use of a much higher power microwave weapon located at a farther distance from the intended targets. Also, the existing hardware could be optimized to meet some specific requirements in covert or finally targeted operations. Let me repeat, much higher power microwave weapon located at a farther distance from the intended target. How much farther are we talking about? At some point, distance simply becomes an, an engineering problem. Use your imagination, because I'm not going to spe speculate. This is not my area of expertise. Today, directed pulsed high peak energy research is officially on the books. With the hub of, the re of this research being built in the state of New Mexico, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory and the University of New Mexico have a long history of collaborating on these projects, going back at least 30 years. I wonder how many brilliant PhDs contributed to the development of this inhumane, te inhumane technology and whether they sleep at night. The fact 
that the U.S. possesses technology capable of causing Havana syndrome is beyond dispute. Professor Lin and other experts agreed about this. And yet the official narrative is still, this is still a mystery. I'm a civilian diagnosed with Havana syndrome. I'm on disability with Havana syndrome. I have not spoken to any of the federal em employees affected by directed pulse microwave attacks. But I can only imagine the sense of disappointment and betrayal that they felt after learning that their own government knew all along about the effects of directed pulse microwave energy on the human brain. As far as us civilians, we are treated as second-class citizens. FBI does want to investigate it. Politicians roll their eyes when they hear about civilian domestic cases of Havana syndrome. We have been excluded from the Havana Act as it only applies to the employees of the State Department and the CIA. And when we go to court, the government openly mocks us and uses condescending language describing our legitimate claims. The mainstream journalism doesn't touch the topic with a 10-foot pole. The number of individuals in the U.S. tortured with some form of directed energy is estimated to be around 400,000. Our hope is that we will have our day in court if the judge in Texas allows us to argue our case in front of the jury of our peers. And if that doesn't happen, we will continue to marvel at the progress of military neurotechnology that made our daily torture possible. And keep reading articles by esteemed authors like Professor James Lynn. Thank you for listening. Until next time.